Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam, and this is Saturday Night Special, episode 99. We got one more to hit that 100 mark, and I think it's going to be a pretty exciting episode for you. So, uh, as far as this week goes, uh, still it's been another quiet week out here in the shop. Uh, we've all been having to work a lot of overtime at work, so we're down there late and don't have a whole lot of time to come out here and start on projects and things like that with uh, other house things going on and stuff that I'm dealing with. But I am preparing some footage for the uh, next episode, 100. We've got, I've got quite a bit of pictures that I'm, that I'm digging up for you guys. And I had a, an overwhelming majority mention that they'd like to know more history about my shop uh, regarding my career and my dad and my granddad and our old shop, that kind of thing. So I think that's what the uh, 100th episode is going to be about is uh, just we'll do a shop tour again. Everybody says shop tour and a, a history lesson. So we've got pictures to share. I've got some couple stories to share. And and I, hopefully I'll bring together a fun and enjoyable episode for you, okay? So I'll be working on that next week. So this week I've got some more machining that I did. Uh, I had a couple trunnion mounts at work and I decided to go ahead and turn the camera on and and I didn't get any footage of the welding itself but you'll see what I did. I had to weld up some trunnion mounts and then set it up, machine some centers and then set it up and turn it in the lathe, okay? And then there was some more indicating work involved with it also. So we'll, we'll throw that in there this week. Uh, no viewer mail, no new tools. So mostly all machining, all right? So. We'll go ahead and get right to it, guys. And I'm looking forward to starting on the uh, next episode for you. All right. These are a couple of hydraulic trunnion mounts that I'm repairing right now. Uh, two separate jobs, just uh, doing them at the same time. This one here was was wore out pretty bad. There was very little there to weld on, so I had to do a lot of buildup to bring this back. So what I'm doing here is uh, this one did not have centers machined in the end and we need some centers in there to set it up to do the lathe work. So now that I've got it welded, we've got it set up in the vise here and we're just going to square it up, which I've already got it squared up like so. Okay, and then we'll find the center. We'll find the center this way and find the center that way and that's going to be our center and we'll flip it over We'll do the same thing. This one was still good. It just had a few thousandths wear on it. It was about five thousandths under. So I was able to chuck it and go ahead and drill some centers on there. And what we'll do is we'll set it up between centers and turn them. And I'll show you how we do that too. I try to get it positioned so you can see this and see the readout here. We're going to use the half command on this uh, new all digital readout. It makes it pretty fast to find center. So. What we'll do first is come on down to one edge. We'll be doing our X. All right, we're gonna find the edge here. Just using our edge finder. Kicked off. So raise up. We're going to zero. All right, and we'll come down to the other side. And you can also just measure this and go half the distance. Okay, I'm just showing you one of the features I like. Come up, find this edge. Okay, so there's our width plus 500 thousandths. So you go half, X, that's going to take you to zero. That'll be in the center there. Alright, so that's the center. Now we're going to do it this way. I'm going to hit the camera mount there. Alright, 
kicked off, so we're going to zero Y, zero it out. And we're going to come across. What do? It's in the book over there. Well, looking, yeah, but that was the book I had here. We had two books floating around. So she, no. I had a laminated copy somewhere. I have to find it. All right, we're going to come up and find that. All right, it's kicked off. So there's our thickness plus 500 thousandths, two inches, 251. We're going to hit half. Y, inch and an eight. That takes us to zero. Oh, too far. All right, so there's the center. There's the center. Now we'll uh, center drill it. All right, before I cut the center, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of mill this flat. This is there's quite a bit of weld on there, and I already know that these are one inch long. Okay, so. This is a little bit of wear right through here. What I'm gonna do, since we already found center, we'll just move it off. We can go right back to it. And what I wanna do is, let's see. I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna manually touch off. I'm gonna lock the quill. All right, and I'm gonna zero the digital readout on Z and I'm gonna drop it an inch. finish it off by hand here with the hand crank all right okay so we're at one inch on Z and that should be our face there I don't know how well that's gonna clean up clean up some so let's go ahead and give it a shot here cutter's been hammered on quite a bit so I don't know how well it's gonna do but it's doing pretty good a little spot right there All right, and then we'll just come right back to zero. Okay, now we'll switch out. There you go, see, it, it almost cleaned it up. Go ahead and put our center drill in. And just put us a small center center hole in there. Probably hard to see that center drill. That sucker sure looks all center. <laughs> I didn't even take a picture of it beforehand, but it was it was almost like a flat, just a flat plate on there. Okay, so it's possible that I'm going to have to come back and uh, do some more welding on this. So we're going to set it up and start turning it. If we need to, we'll just go back and weld it. So what we'll do is go ahead and get our center trued up here. This is just a, a self-made center using a piece of steel. And I got a little shoulder so that it, it'll push against the jaws and you don't ever have to worry about your workpiece going back too far. All right, so we'll get it trued up real quick. And 
this is going to be a close enough type of job here. This isn't typically what you want to do is, is machine that. Turn your compound around and machine it. This will work. So that was about a half a thousandth. Just put in a few tents and that'll be close enough to this. Okay. Alright, so Alright, so we're gonna use this laid dog here. Alright, and it ain't gonna have a perfect fit because it's welded, but it'll work. Alright. So Try to reach around the camera here. Come on, man. Okay, there we go. Locking the tail stock. Tip this up against the jaw. I hope we can get it tightened up. All right, let's hope that works. <laughs> We'll see how this works out. I've showed you before that uh, jobs like this, uh, high-speed steel tool bits work really good versus the beating and banging on a carbide insert. And that tip has actually got some wear on it, but I'm just using it since we're turning weld down. I'm gonna take another 100. See where we're at. Still got that one high side there. Just keep working her down. All right, it's looking like this side's gonna clean up, which is kind of surprising me. I, I had quite a bit of weld on there though. So that cut there is leaving me about 16th to come off. So we'll get that turned down to one inch. Uh, get it cleaned up in the corner there and polish it and we'll flip it around, okay? All right, we got her down to one inch, uh, just a little polish to do. We got a thousandths over, and we'll break the corner there with a chamfering tool. But we're gonna come in here and clean this corner up right now. I'm gonna use this little radius insert tool here. It 
it doesn't hurt if you take that corner down a little bit. Clean up just a little bit more of that face there. And I'm going to have to slow it down a little bit for this. cleaned up break that corner just a little bit all right do some filing and some polishing bring it down to one inch all right we've got her filed and polished do a little check make sure we're on one inch Good to go. We'll flip it around. All right, so I got it flipped around. So more of the same, man. I think that'll clean up okay too. This one wasn't worn quite as bad. That other one, man, there wasn't hardly anything there. So I went down one size on the laid dog. Okay. I'm ready to start turning. I'm going to clean a little bit of this corner up first. There was some, um, I just, I need, there was a lot of wear in that corner from the bearing, so I needed to clean, uh, weld that up, fill it in good. I'm just working this by hand here. Just about even all the way across. All right, we'll go ahead and move in a hundred. Taking a hundred at a time, hundred thousandths. Okay, we got the second side done. Go ahead and give it a check too. It's got through polish in it. Okay, just under, which is good. We're within our tolerance there. We try to keep it within a half under. Okay. Now that one did have a couple pinholes there but that's okay uh what are these these are, there's self-aligning bearings that go on here so allow this cylinder to pivot so that one's ready to go we'll go ahead and loosen our laid dog loosen our tailstock and back that out 
okay i have to go in there and do a little file in there for the laid dog there we go okay so that one's done and then what we're going to do is i'll repeat the process for this one All right, there's both of our trunnion repairs. We got them both done. Here's the one that I just finished up off of camera there. And of course, you've seen me do this one here. So this one, I got one more op that I need to do. <clears throat> We're gonna chuck this thing up in the fore jaw. And you see this here? There's actually some wear in there. There's a cushion that slides in that's attached to the rod. And so this is out of round. So what I want to do is chew this hole up round and then we'll make us a we'll make a new cushion to fit it. So we got a little bit more indicating to do here. Okay, we've got our block and it measures four and a half by four and a half. So we can check it here and here. So I've already got the jaw set. Four and a half, four and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to chuck it to this first groove right here on all four. So I'm going to set it on that one and line it up. I'm looking here and here. Lightly snug it. kind of do like that bump it around and then snug this one here okay so we're on the first groove on every jaw and that'll get us real close there and then we'll bump this face true Go in here and try it just right there first and see. Let's see if we can get us a, a clean face there. Not just put us close. Too shabby. Looks like one thousandths. Okay. All right, James Green, you're gonna like this. This is the number 671 that I bought from you back at the Barzi Bash. Okay. Nice little indicator attachment that we use once in a while. Put this down here on the indicator. Okay, so what I want to do is reach in here and indicate this O-ring groove that's been machined in there. That should be true with everything, okay? With your rod, your tube, and everything. So we'll get this set up and Get up in here. Now you can use a test indicator. There's all kind of ways to do this. This is just one way to do it, all right? There we go. I like using the dial indicator as much as I can. It's just more convenient than hooking up test indicators. So we'll go ahead and proceed to indicate this.
I hope you guys can see that. All right, there's our low, that's our high. A little too far. I'm going to call that within a half a thousandth any way you look at it. And we'll come back and check our face. Now you can see that, that out of roundness there and where and what we're going to do is we're going to bore that to clean it up. First thing I do is face it just to get rid of that edge. Okay. I'm gonna set a depth of an inch and a quarter. Our cushion is an uh, inch and an eighth wide, so we need to have a little clearance. Let's go up there, inch and a quarter. Hit a zero. I'm just gonna skin this clean. Let's see what 20,000 looks like. Quite a bit still. <clears throat> this will be fifty. Still got some there. Just a tiny little bit left right there, but I'm where I want to be on size. So what we need to do is uh, chamfer this, and this will be ready. Well, guys, that's going to be it for the repairs on on this one. Just to, uh, but I mean, I'll show you what else I, I'm going to be doing. We're just out of time for this video, but so this is the cushion that goes into here. This is on the rod in front of your piston, so to be like so. And as this piston's coming forward, this cushion, this ring comes into here and it restricts the airflow or the fluid, and which will go through these two holes right here, and it slows it down until it comes up until the piston comes all the way up and stops. So sometimes they, there's gets to be a lot of wear. This piston has got a lot of wear. I know it's hard to see, but like these edges, you have a, a lot of rolled metal on these edges right here, really sharp. It's got a lot of wear. So this is where wore way undersized. I have to build a new piston for it. 
and then we're going to make a new cushion it'll be the same id length it's just it's going to match this right here with you know you'll give it enough clearance so that it doesn't jam and hit you to go up in there and restrict it so that's it all right see you on the next job